Buenos días, me llamo Andres de Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo estás? Yo soy en Cañas Gordas, Colombia. Hello, I'm Andy Lee Graham of the United States of America. I'm in Cañas Gordas, Colombia today. And today I'm going to talk about how my suntan keeps me thin, okay? Um, Aristotle Onassis that married Jackie Jacqueline Kennedy after uh, President John F. Kennedy got killed, had a quote said, you never can be too rich or too tan. Okay, uh, most people uh, are under the idea that uh, tanning is a dangerous thing. I'm going to talk about today fat, fat, obesity, and how I, I just, I woke up and I watched a Eric Berg video, a very wise person um, on thing. And I've been collect. I, I have a bunch of collection of health things on a, on a, on a YouTube channel called biohacking. It's longer than that, but if you search for Andy Lee Graham biohacking, you find it. I don't really post many videos, but I make a lot of video collections. I collect videos on different topics and I make, um, a series of videos on this. Uh, so when I saw this video on my regular channel, I decided I better go save it on the biohacking channel. But, but there's a book, and Eric Berg talks about a book, Why There Are No Fat People in Color Colorado. I got to say it like an English person instead of a Spanish person. Colorado. In, 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 in Spanish, you would say Colorado. Colorado. Okay, but I think it's a color in Spanish. Why there are no fat people in Colorado and Eric Berg. And I have, I will try to put these um, links all in a video and I, I put it under notes in the description and then you can go to a YouTube channel where it's kind of confusing and I want people to kind of be confused, strangely. Um, but I'll go to the swimming pool. Uh, Kanye Scordis has a swimming pool there. Here, they got a very, very excellent uh, gym. Um, not a lot of equipment, but some really good people. And really what gets you to go to the gym is good people, much more than the equipment. But I'll, I'll go to the swimming pool. I guess, as I understand, they have two here in Cañas Gordas. The N it has an N Y on the thing. It's a little tilde thing. It means Nya. It was like Cañas Gordas, which means Fat bamboo. <laughs> okay, so I am going to a swimming pool today and I'm going to get tan. And there's many reasons why a swimming pool makes you, uh, or not a swimming pool, that's, I'm, I, I take that back. The better thing to do is go to the ocean. The best thing possible is the salt air with the salt water and the sand. But I'm going to go to the swimming pool and uh, lay by the swimming pool and there's a lot of motivation going to going to swimming pool to get it. But the bigger thing that um, Eric Berg is talking about is the value of vitamin D. Um, and what's interesting is people don't know it, but one of the, one of the essential gears I have is a swimsuit. There is no, there's so many times when you're invited to go get in a jacuzzi or go to a swimming pool or something. A lot of the aid organizations I meet in Africa and a lot of countries on the planet, the four-star hotels for about a dollar, you can go to a four-star hotel and hang out at the pool. Um, one of the great ways to benefit from a five-star hotel without paying for a five-star price. But I always carry a swimsuit and I'm trying to get some swimsuits that look like uh, exercise shorts. And the ones I have right now are serve pretty good. Uh, Today, one of my goals is, is to make awkward, disruptive videos. <laughs> okay, why do I do that? Um, I'm, I'm becoming a philosopher in a sense that I realize that we need to give, uh, you need to have a person watching a video or reading in uh, what I would call thinking decisive mode. Okay, they thinking and they're deciding yes or no, this does not apply to me. And then you have listeners that, cannot make a decision that sort of processes. And then you have the ones that just went entertained and what entertainment that need to be bumped over into a lifestyle of uh, thinking. And I, I learned today, I was sitting there this morning at the coffee shop drinking a 25 cent Tinto in Colombia. 
six thirty in the morning, and I sit there and I go. The problem is um, people haven't been pushed into a place where they were forced to think, okay, and they lived their life on float, and so all they think about is entertainment. Don't get me wrong, they think, but they really think in just what is fun and what is not fun, and what is entertainment and what is not entertainment. So um, they don't go into the mode where they have to make a rational decision. I, I remember this girlfriend of mine, eh, she wasn't a girlfriend, she was somebody, well, whatever, she was cutting my hair. And she, I, I'll never forget, she walked into Columbia Street West one time, this girl is wild. She walked into, uh, uh, Columbia Street West and said, I just did a line of Coke and I'm wearing no underwear. <laughs> and I go, well, what was hilarious is she got pregnant and had a baby. <laughs> okay. And that went totally opposite. She went from this incredibly wild person to a person that went into thinking mode and all she wanted was entertainment before that into a decisive thinking mode. And this is how the goal is, is always to shift people from the entertainment phase of the three ways of learning to the making a decision whether it's right or wrong, okay? And you got to make a, a decision whether something is right or wrong, valuable, feasible, or whatever. But today, I want to talk about fat. And 35% uh, like of the United States is supposedly fat. Of course, that... That number is crazy. And truly, in the, in the United States, don't get me wrong, everywhere on the planet, okay, you, you think it's only in the United States. Um, the only way, 90% of the planet, probably 30 to 50% of the people are fat. And a lot of countries, especially the tribal ones, they wear these big skirts and, they, you know, it's like Guatemalans. Definitely the ladies in Guatemala are fat. Here in Colombia, definitely after about 30, they're, they got pretty wide nalgas, butts. Okay, but I want you right now to go on a mental time trip, a visual time trip. I want you to go back in time when you were physically fit, when you were thin, vibrant, and strong. There's a time in everybody's life when generally they were in good shape. Very few children at age, I don't know, 10 or 5 are really fat. But uh, many are right now getting to be that way. But there should and we hope and we dream in this visual thing that you're doing right now that you had a time in your life when you were visually cut. Cut is a workout thing for when you can see the little muscles popping out of your arms. That means cut. Um, I worked out every day for almost 20 years um, religiously. I worked out inside the United States um, at a gym that I always had close to my house. I went, well, my, wherever I was living. I would actually only choose a place that was close to the, the gyms that I want. I tried to be strategically in case that gym closed, I could go to another gym. But there's nothing better than going to happy hour at the gym. But take a mental trip right now. Do you remember being thin? Why do you forget to be that way? And you, in a lot of ways, we forgot the pattern and the lifestyle that we had when we were thin, okay? But my best physical health was when I was actually on the farm. Probably when I was an absolutely strongest was when I was on the farm. Okay, I worked for about 12, no, about 10 summers for a, a man named Emery C. Spade, nicknamed Buster, because he was a buster, he was a boxer, he was a golden glove boxer, and he's dead now, he's, a, he's one, one of my mentors. But this farmer boss, we bailed hay commercially, uh, which each bale weighed about 50 to 70 pounds, and we always had plastic twine on it because it was uh, meant to keep from, they watered it down and made it into mushroom, uh, the humus or the, the soil to grow mushrooms at the Brighton Mushroom Farm. So we were baling, um, I don't know, we baled like 650 tons of uh, kind of wet uh, alfalfa grass, or, and we did some straw too. But uh, we, we bailed some hay all summer long, first, second, third cuttings. 
boom, everything went to the bright mushroom part. Well, they kept some for the 100 cows too, but uh, there's a difference between a cow and a steer, guys. <laughs> okay, um, But on the farm, I, I was in incredibly great shape. Plus then I was playing football, basketball. I was a uh, high jumper and a pole water. And I, I played baseball until I, I really didn't like to play baseball. Okay. I know it's third baseman. I had a hell of an arm, but I don't like to sit there and have a ball hit at me. It just doesn't make me happy. But I did get hit in the nose one time. I was also a catcher. Okay. Then I, the second time I was really in great shape was when I was working concrete when I was about 27 years old. And uh, that I worked for a concrete construction company for two years. And that was incredibly hard work. We would work about eight to 14 hours a day. And then the third time was the 20 years where I had a 20 year window where I was actually in uh, very good shape and I went to the gym every day. And I was, because what happens when you go to the gym every day, uh, that, that which is the opposite of what you're doing. So uh, it's very hard to eat really fattening food when you're trying to do the opposite mentally. So the, mental, the two mental things work against each other. But how do we create a rerun of the, the visual? Did you do a visual trip? Did you go back in time? Did you do a, a memory thing when you um, was thin, cut, energetic, vibrant, strong personality, and now you're fat? <laughs> Um, a lot of people could tell me with great detail the time when they were fat. And then I sit there and I go, and I, I get kind of irritated when I listen to the stories because I said, why aren't you doing anything to do it? I mean, I have people talk about their muscle body weight, muscle body fat percentages and things like that and how they jog and all that stuff. And they, and, and they give me really good advice and they're doing none of it. Okay, so the goal in life sometimes it's really kind of simple. All you got to do is remember when certain things were working and then go back and do it. Somehow we have a natural process of forgetting what we're doing. But I want you to create a rerun. But my best health of my life. Okay. In this book, why are there no fat people in Colorado? And Henry, you know, it's about a 10 minute video or something like that with Eric Berg. And I got the link which will be in the Google Docs thing that you can go look at. Very, you know, don't get me wrong. I guess you could look, read, okay, you can look, search for Eric Berg, B-E-R-G, Why Are There No Fat People in Colorado? Which I don't really like the title because that's not true. There's surely fat people in Colorado. And I'm going to, to really fend off not saying anything that is not one not 100, 99, 95% accurate in a diction and verbal way. Okay, but what in the book, I guess he talks about in uh, 1980, they came out with the idea that uh, of, they, they really did the cancer scare, that people are getting cancer from the sun, and everybody started to put sunblock on. And I have never done that, okay? I've always put on... Uh, coconut oil or you know baby oil or something to try to magnify the sun. I did use that uh, zinc oxide stuff on my nose like the surfers uh, but anymore if I ever do I'm tempted I, I found out how I could put uh, kind of a, a band-aid type gauze on my nose to be a sunblock when I was in Huatulco, Mexico last two years ago whatever one and a half years but uh, there's two different time periods when they really screwed up the United States the, they created the SAD diet, the uh, standard American diet in the 1960s when they suddenly decided that every kind of fat was bad for you. So everybody went from eating uh, the very healthiest foods, which would be eggs and bacon and uh, all these high, high fat protein foods to highly processed food. And in a lot of ways, it seems like a conspiracy. So they kicked everybody into eating the food in a bag and they, they and you know type 2 diabetes is right now incredibly sad it's going to bankrupt the United States if people don't get off this okay but in 1980 they got rid of the sunblock I don't put sunblock on there because my research says that sunblock causes cancer more than the sun okay but the sad 
is the standard American diet. So the um, what is interesting though, and I, you know, this is going in in coupling with uh, I did a I collected a hmm, I wonder if that's uh, I better relabel this. Okay, I have a I have a. I have a playlist on my biohacking channel where I collected what about eight different um, travel, you know, health experts. And most, you know, 60% of these guys are actually MDs, okay? And they give what they consider the best supplements. And the one thing they concur on totally, almost all of them, is this is like Eric Berg, Dave. Uh, let me just give you the list here. Uh, the names of the people in this are uh, like Steve Gundry, Mark Hyman, uh, Steve Gundry, MD, he's a surgeon, Dr. Mark Hyman, David Sinclair, he's a researcher at Harvard, uh, an athlean guy, which is a uh, weightlifter guy, Ken D. Berry, MD, Peter Atia, MD, Dr. Eric Berg, which he's really a chiropractor, and Thomas Lawyer, which is a six-pack abs guy. He's really cut. But these guys came up and they gave, and the one thing they concur on all is vitamin D. And what they kind of say is that you need about 5,000, I don't know, international units, I think they're talking about. I don't really know what this IU or UI stands for, IU. And so I did some research and I got a PubMed research paper where they say roughly you get about a thousand IU, international units, I think, for every 45 minutes. So what this says to get the recommended 5,000 almost as a consensus, okay, and there's kind of an idea of like an expert consensus that can give you a, a, an overwhelming preponderance of evidence that you should do this. What I've came up with and is, because I don't really want to take vitamin D, because in a lot of ways, one of the side effects of vitamin D is it makes you sleepy. Uh, but melatonin and vitamin D are different things. We have melanin in the skin, okay? And melanin in the skin is when, like, when you got a, a black person or a Mexican person or different color skins, it is a natural shield against ultraviolet rays. So what's interesting in this um, video, he talks about the, the higher you are, the elevation, the more ultraviolet rays. So up here at 1,300 meters high or 4,500 feet, I'm actually closer to the sun and more intense ultraviolet rays. So I should be able to get my vitamin D with the least amount of problems. Now, I do believe that anytime you burn yourself, you, you irritate the skin, and too much burning of your skin is not a good idea. But the nose and the, this area of the thing, and there may be different parts of the body that are more susceptible to do it. Now, without any hair, I'm having a funny problem with uh, burning the top of my head. But uh, People get fat, and in this video, it says specifically that there's a, almost a direct correlation between vitamin D and getting fat. And the reason why the people from Colorado are thinner, or there's definitely fat people, but why he's, he's, his, his clickbait title, There Are No Fat People in Colorado, is because it's higher elevation. You know, Colorado is one mile high. Okay, it's... Uh, I mean, Denver's one mile high. A lot of it is like high plains drifting. Uh, Clint Eastwood's movie, High Plains Drifting, was in it. I did a, I did a car drive. I drove, I flew in there, rented a car, and drove, went high plains drifting. There's a lot of cities up in the mountains in Colorado that are like, I, you know, something like a movie. You know, they, they live pretty, um, I don't know, not very rich. But um, it's... That they get more thing plus there's a lesser amount of the my well i'm going to say the black people the, the color the people with diff, different colored skin that um are have to have a lot more vitamin d or sun to uh, actually get their vitamin d so the white the whiter you are the quicker you can get your vitamin d 
in a in some so many ways. But when you get tan, it's sort of in a way bringing up I think the melatonin to the skin or mel melanin or melatonin. I'm not sure, but it brings the color to your skin to make it so you don't burn. And so the tanner you are, the less you burn. You can go out. I mean, I was in the sun when I was younger, all day long, every day for months okay and when I worked concrete same thing and I never had skin cancer why I I think it's because I have a least amount of chemicals on my body there is okay but uh, people get fat for many different reasons the biggest reason is normally sugar okay uh, they're addicted to sugar and sugar just does absolutely everything it makes you uh, mentally lethargic, it makes cortisol go in your brain, you get inflammation everywhere. Uh, you got When you got chemicals on your body, you get fat too because the fat goes around and, and goes around. When you, take, when you get a tattoo, there's kind of like a bunch of uh, the white blood cells and everything goes around and collects around there and forms kind of like a little fat bubble around the, the, the uh, ink. And well, every chemical that you put on your body, you go on your skin, just creates a massive amounts of fat to protect itself and that's my opinion okay now that needs that's a propositional thing i propose it maybe we need to get some clarification on that but definitely chemicals are uh, something anything you put on your body chemically makes you fatter the sun um carbs carbohydrates any kind of uh disaccharide or monosaccharides uh, what one of the biggest reasons why people are fat right now, in my opinion, is the lack of social shaming. Okay, uh, somehow they, somewhere along the line we went really irrational. Okay, the the way you learn to be rational is by consequences. It's kind of an operant condition, negative and positive reinforcement. And so fathers and mothers are not saying, "Hey, kid, you're getting fat." <laughs> and they're they're not creating a a shaming situation where the person strives for perfection they have no perfection there's no competition and this is the worst possible thing you can do for a person i i learned this in africa i was like why do these guys drive their motorcycle like when when they decide to go to a restaurant they don't they, they drive their motorcycle just like you would walk and i go the quickest and fastest path to where they want to go they don't care anything about the legal system because there is no legal system so they go wing. And I, I finally realized that they had no consequences. They didn't learn, there was no reason to do it. Um, it's like arriving late in the whole uh, Latino world, they're, they're almost always um, 30 minutes late. And there is no consequences. I watched at the restaurant this morning, two workers were working, I was eating my eggs, and the one uh, newer girl, where, wherever she came from, arrived, you know, half hour late. and. Uh, this is the wrong thing to do. What you, if you have a business, you have to, like when I had, I had one rule that I would enforce religiously when I ran my real estate company and I was managing 230 properties and buying houses, show up at eight. If you don't show up at eight on time, you're fired. And if they showed up right at eight or one minute before eight, I, I, I would find a reason to fire them too because that's not the way to understand consequences. You gotta have some room for error, right? Uh, you got to be able to, you know, like if you have a real estate agent or an attorney or something or they can't obey the time schedules or anything like that, they're not very smart. Okay. Anybody that can't uh, adjust their time frames and understand how to be on time is it's not, in my opinion, that, that smart. Okay. But shaming, fat shaming, no consequences, no rational mind. Okay. But the standard American diet started in really in 19... In the 1960s, because of a couple of different studies that went into Congress and a bunch of stuff, and it just destroyed the planet. Okay, uh, but um, you can see that this is a benefit to Coca-Cola and all the uh, corporations. They want you to think that you should eat all these sugar products because sugar is very addictive. Okay, the uh, I want you to search for the truth. I want everybody to be a philosopher. And a philosopher, in my opinion, okay, anybody is a philosopher. It's talking in a way, because are you a person? The philosopher hunts for truth. 
really can't lie, and doesn't wrap knowledge by baiting with photos and words. They want clarity, simplicity, and the truth. They have a sense of real problems when things become clickbait. Like me, I get really upset uh, when um, there's any way that you could misinterpret what I'm saying. Now, don't you know, there is no way to have a meeting of the brains where we're not going to have a bulk of mind meld where you understand. That's okay, but that's part of the thinking and decisive part. So there's three parts to learning, the thinking decisive phase, the, the listening phase, and which is the thinking decisive phase of learning is means that 5% of you are thinking and did. And then there's about 5%, in my opinion, that are listing and trying to process it and maybe it'll hit them and they'll understand later and then you got the the other 90 percent they're just one entertainment and they need to get the the boot put to their butt and somehow be serious like what i was saying is what the way to get serious is to have some something more or less a trauma happen in your life where you suddenly go from a boy to a man from a young girl to a woman it's like having a baby makes women. So in a lot of ways, women often are more rational than men. Men on, on the planet, men are like uh, sperm donors, and uh, they sit around, and most of the women run the businesses on the planet. They don't know it, but the women already are running the planet, okay? They will soon take over the world. Okay, but a philosopher, everybody that hunts for the truth, you don't have to actively talk with a low voice and say, I'm the... That's ridiculous. And when these guys are making videos talking about philosophers and stoics and they turn the voice, they put the music on the background, they're not being honest. What they're trying to do is suck in your brain with baiting with photos and words. And that is deceptive. And it's a way to entertain you and try for them to make money trying to make you feel like you are a philosopher person because you're watching philosophy. You're not a philosopher just because you can quote philosophers, okay? Okay, but in the acquisition of knowledge, it's my opinion, as a philosopher, you should get 25% by experience. So what we're talking about on this is actually when, when you was tan and getting a lot of vitamin D and younger, was you thinner? That's kind of an experience thing. Then you have knowledge from reading and watching videos. You can go watch the Eric Bergman. You can go do a search on vitamin D related to sun, okay? Vitamin D and fat, vitamin D and obesity. And then you got people that, new people that, like I can have people write me that are new that I can learn from and have conversations. And then I have the my 25% of my friends that are philosophers that really want to seek the truth. A philosopher hunts truth, can't lie. It's very hard for them to lie. Anybody that's easy for a lot to lie is a person that you really should. Most politicians, including Donald Trump and these guys, seem to think that uh, lying is okay. I do not believe that lying is okay. I believe that lying, um, the, the lie destroys me, okay? It doesn't destroy you, it destroys me. Um, but expert consensus opinions is what we've got. So I've got about eight different experts on health, doctors that are recommending vitamin D. And then there's a correlation, it appears, between things. And I can say that when I'm in the sun, I'm losing a lot of weight. But there's a lot of things that go into that more than just the vitamin D. Uh, an actual universal fact is something like uh, the earth is round, where you know 99% of the people agree. Uh, that's a fact. Anything like climate change, that there's nothing factual about the statement of uh, of climate change or uh, climate warming or all these different things because it's like a 50-50 thing. It's not even close to being factual. Um, it's not considered a thing. But the cognitive biases is a problem. Um, and then we, then what will happen is somebody will tell you you'll get cancer by the sun and then you meet another person. You keep meeting people, looking for people that agree with this because you don't want to go in the sun. And a lot of people, um, I don't know. They got. I I don't know why they don't want to go outside. Uh, maybe 
Maybe they're afraid of leaving their family. I would say there's a trauma for a child of leaving the house and actually having to go out and be by themselves. That could be that there, there may be 50% of the children that are not feeling safe enough to actually leave the house and go into the sun. And so they just use that as an excuse to stay in. But liars like liars, lazy people like lazy people, rich people like uh, rich people, dysfunctional people like the golfers like golfers, scuba divers. Uh, I have on this thing my goals, and I got a blank goal worksheet. And uh, but uh, when I was in, when I was in for 20 years, I would go to the sun, one of these sun places, because I like how I feel and look when I'm tan. Uh, right now, what you're seeing is me just normally walking around tan. I'm not doing anything special, but I may, for the next 20 days, do something special and go to the gym and read my uh, Kindle Paperwhite. The Kindle Paperwhite is really good because you can read it in direct sun, just like a book. But uh, when I was younger, I had some sort of fungus on my skin, and the only way I could ever get it to go away, I put all these freaking cr creams on it, everything the doctor did, didn't work, okay? The fungus goes into your bloodstream, and I finally realized this with an Indian doctor. Funguses go into your blood, and they, they circulate, and you can't get them away by putting stuff on topical on your skin, in my opinion. But the, uh, the sun would make it go away, because really what the sun does is kill bacteria, right? Ultraviolet ray goes into all the seven or six six or seven or five layers of the skin and really purifies the skin. But uh, motivators, there's motivators to get thin. And that's what we're talking about today, how to be thin. Remember the past and try to do the same actions that you did when you were thin. Um, motivations for me is when I go to the gym, see, one of the ways you give up an addiction is you uh, like I was addicted to alcohol and I was addicted to alcohol and I was addicted to the bar environment okay and when I gave up drinking it was very tough I finally could stay sober when I would go to the bars and stop drinking I didn't have any problem I had trouble giving up two different things at the same time the social life and the, the alcohol at the same time uh, there is not a direct correlation between social life at the bars and drinking, okay? Uh, don't get me wrong, most people cannot go to the bars because they're so tempted that any amount of temptation and they just fold, okay? So I don't recommend anybody that's an alcoholic to go to the bars, but I hardly go to the bars at all right now. But uh, I will, I don't care, I don't have any desire to drink, but uh, when I'm walking around I, one of the way, reasons, I, the one way I say to lose weight for sure is to put a lot of mirrors all over, all over your house, full length mirrors, and have a scales and get on the scales actually every day and get some feedback, negative and positive feedback, operant conditioning, negative and positive feedback, social shaming, you gotta socially shame yourself, stand in the mirror naked, look at the mirror, full length mirror, and stand on the scales. That could give you some motivation because that is social shame. It's mental shame. It's, so, it's a type of currency that goes in the brain. Right now, all we have is this like culture, like, like, like. Everybody talks about their life. They don't, they don't really see that negative um, thing also is a benefit. I, I believe the negative is a lot more valuable than the positive. But you just never bring words out of your mouth that are negative about yourself. That is a very horrible thing to do. Okay, but I walk around with shirt, my shirt off, that's motivating. Mirrors are a motivation. Love, the hope of love makes me think. Like when I went in the gym the other day, there was like five or six absolutely number eight, number nine girls working out. I mean, this one girl's abdominals were so cut that I was like really proud of her. It's not just, see, I'm, I worked out of the gym for 20 years. I really respect when somebody gets cut. I don't respect when you get a big barrel chest meathead. That is the opposite of intelligent. This girl was cut. She was working a little bit too much on her legs, but she was um, very, you know, because it's body shaping what we want. We don't want to just get big all over. I did this. When I first started working out, I got bigger, bigger, bigger. I started getting wider all the way. Then I realized that it's body shaping. So I, 
I found the, um, you know, the guy that played Hercules. What is that guy's name? He's kind of a religious guy. Uh, Brad Pitt in the movie Spartacus or something like that. I think it was Spartacus. Um, he was really cut. Sometimes Brad Pitt is really the body shape that I want. Okay, but you need to be able to have your goal. So I have a goal worksheet that goes through the mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, career, and all these things. And I got my, what what is mine. I'm having trouble. I didn't, I couldn't find the one that I had filled out. A lot of these things were on my uh, website. Now I'm, I've lost a lot of stuff because of my website, but I'm putting it all on Google Docs. And somehow I'll, I'll eventually just download it into a different way, which is completely independent of any company. Okay, because don't trust any of these companies. But I have a channel called, so search for Andy Lee Graham Biohacking, and you'll find some of these uh, really thing. They're, the first link in the description has a database where it goes into different topics. So you can sit there and see the videos I've collected on walking, on gait, on suntans, on diabetes, on dementia. There's, there's 300 some databases. No, 300 records or 300 different uh, things. And I'm trying to get it uh, more organized. And it's in a, because it, Google Docs, YouTube is horrible. It does this addictive thing where you can't go just find a playlist on my channel. They, they move them around and constantly moving. And, and it's because this configuration thing is a highly addictive thing to the brain. What makes you addicted to something is when it's a random thing and it's an emotional jump. <clears throat> Uh, I can't find it. Uh, you have to think about it. That emotional dor endorphin, endorphin or dopamine rush is what makes you addicted. I was the CEO of a social network. I know how to make people addicted. And I didn't do it because uh, I, you want them a little addicted, but you don't want them so addicted with it. I, I've been laughing because now that I've cut my hair off, I've got less hate mail from men. <laughs> we had a lot of men that were very confused with my longer hair. <laughs> They really didn't know that, uh, they, they really didn't understand their, their emotions of what's going on in their brain. They were um, having kind of a, I don't know what you want to call this. I'm not going to say it's homosexual, but it's a admiration, a love that go, that, that got, that's a little too much, okay? And there's nothing wrong with emulating a person. There's nothing wrong with respecting a person. There, there is a problem when you don't really understand your feelings. When I'm looking at Brad Pitt in this movie thing, I'm going, God, I want to be like him. When I'm looking at Hercules and he's cut and you see this guy that did the TV show, Hercules, he was, he, he was perfectly shaped. And I want to be that because uh, it, it's the way to get uh, intimacy. And I, I do know that the, the, the one thing, like the, the, the YouTube channel, Charisma on Command, if there's one thing I really do believe is that family, friends, and everybody, and everybody should work on being a charismatic, lovable person. We need to be a lovable person, okay? We need to be attractive. We need to be mentally fit, agile, quick. We need to be what? is best attractive to the world not but lying is the if anything can make a person hate you for life is lying okay but uh, when a person lies to me and then they want me to agree with their and i don't agree they get radically think because a lot of people are living in a delusion of who they are okay but you want to be skinny and uh, i i don't have much use for fat people why because they can't they can't walk I, I have an active life and they don't fit into my lifestyle. It's not that I have a problem with talking to them in a, in, a, in a coffee shop and I don't care that they're fat other than if they're my family, then I really do care, <laughs> okay? But we need to get a life, okay? You need to get some shaming going on between your friends and buddies. And that's what a friend is. A friend has permission to tell you that you're being a, you're being a screw up. Okay, I'm your friend. I'm telling you as a philosopher, be the best of you. Be the best Andy, be the best Jane, the best Mary, be the best of the best. 
and no, then you'll have no regrets for your life. Okay, I'm laughing. Everybody my age is older than me. I guess that's a twisting word. Is that a joke, banter, what is it? It's not the exact truth, is it? Everybody my age is older than me. Henry David Thoreau was very, uh, one of my heroes, was very cutthroat on things. He, he, he very politely told you were a jerk in very poetic language. Okay, um, I'm looking for some Patreon things. I, I think after I get up to $1,200 or $1,500, I will stop taking Patreon uh, money. And that means that um, there's up to that point, you can find a way to communicate. If the only way you're going to be able to communicate with me is to be family or working with me or consulting or my best friend or, but the simple thing is you got to be a patriot and my family's a patriot. So anybody that's a patriot, it has the ability to communicate with me. I do like a good question on travel, so I can. Um, I, I do like to make videos on answering questions. That doesn't mean I'm going to communicate with you. I'll just make a video about it, and then I'll, I'll shut off communication with you. Because I need to meet people halfway that have made a decision to think. Because a philosopher, 95% of the people are not capable. All they want is entertainment. They haven't been pushed into this phase where they're thinking or processing. And even the 5% that are actually thinking a decision haven't put it from all they've done is seen it. They don't do it or teach it. They just see it and it goes in one ear and out the other and they forget what they're doing. Okay, become a patron so you can communicate with me and meet with me in real life because I won't uh, sabotage it. I, I'm very good at uh, having a wonderful life. Why? Because I'm very good at strategies. Okay, life is good. I'm here in Canyas Gordas, Colombia. I will be flying on the 24th to uh, Guatemala for about 10 days. Then I go to Tampa for four days. Then I fly to Monterey, California. And then I go to, in late June, I go spend a month in a tent on Vixler Lake in Kendallville. And I'm going to be a little Henry David Thoreau in a tent about the size of his cap. Uh, life is good. La vida es bien. La vida vi es belle. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. Nice to meet you. Didn't shut up.